So we now have all of the planking pulled back off for the sub deck and as you can see we have masked off all of the contact points. Everything that when this was upside down and I outlined with a pencil all of my framework it's now flipped over and I've taped off all of that. Um, again because when I glue these down, glue and screw them down, I want to be gluing a wood to wood surface with epoxy. I don't want to coat this with epoxy and then rely on a mechanical bond to glue everything together. I'd rather have a, a wood on wood with epoxy in between. So they're all taped off and I am getting ready to officially roll on some more Glen L epoxy shield and we can get them glued down. So here we are now. We've got the epoxy laid down and the tape peeled and you can see the light and dark spots. So everything that's light is a contact place that'll get structural epoxy or thickened epoxy and screwed down. So obviously this is the bow. This would be a, the, one of the side battens. This is a center batten. This is frame five and a half. So uh, yeah, that's where we are. Everything's coated. It took six ounces of epoxy shield or thin epoxy encapsulating epoxy. Six ounces to cover all four of the sub deck planks. Moving right along. So here's a look at what I was doing tonight. Spent a little over an hour working on the stainless cut water. Um, this is another six inch stainless Glen L bow eye. And it's identical to the two that I used on the transom. I wanted all three of my bow eyes or tow hooks to match. So originally this is a flat surface across here and it has two little tits that stick out as uh, like anti-rotate kind of kind of devices. They're sharp. So when you tighten that up, those two little points bite in to the, for instance, the transom and they keep it from rotating. Um, however, that isn't going to work and a flat surface isn't going to work. Um, so what I did was I removed the stainless all thread from the stainless bow eye. Uh, again, this is a Glen L. I bought, purchased it from uh, Glen L. Six inch stainless bow eye. Uh, I removed this stainless all thread and ground the two little points off that were on the flat side back here. Uh, ground those off so it was completely flat back here. At that point, I then, and I don't know if you can see it very well. Hopefully it'll focus. Hopefully, focus. There, you can see it. I then ground a V in the center of what was flat all the way down the center of that um, so it would fit on my, uh, on my stem, roughly the same, roughly the same angle. Um, I had already located where I wanted this bow eye to be. Basically the rubber block for my winch is going to rest right below it. So that gives me a nice positive uphill pull. Um, on the bow and I know when the rubber block is resting underneath the bow eye that the boat is on the correct or in the correct position on the trailer. So uh, the next thing I did was locate where I wanted this hole to be after I had modified this and checked the fit. Locate where I wanted this hole to be exactly and I built this little this little drilling jig basically. I took my my uh, bevel square and I found the angle of the front of the boat and I transferred that to this block of two by four exact same angle transferred it to it then I set up my compound miter saw and cut this and it took me actually two or three tries to get this to fit the front of the boat just right nice and tight so after two or three tries I got the right angle then I drilled a a center hole setting this in my drill press so that I knew it was perfectly perpendicular front to back up and down perfectly straight hole now as you can see here it's not centered because the width of this 2x4 is not the same width as the bow eye but what I did was using the bottom side here I've got a, an arrow that says down I measured from this face up to the center of where my hole should be and drilled the hole there so that when this was on here the uh, the bottom side of this 2 by on my mark put the hole exactly where I wanted it to be so this is just a jig that I built to drill the hole through the center of the stainless 
and I don't know if it's kind of dark, but yeah, there you can see it. My bow eye comes all the way through, and it's uh, just lightly snugged up on the stem there. You can barely see the, the stainless. But it came out not perfectly centered, but very, very, very close. I can't complain at all. So, uh, basically, I wanted a cut water, stainless cut water, and I wanted a bow eye, and generally, that's not an option. If somebody were going to build a cut water, generally, they won't put a bow eye on them. I don't know why, but uh, I'd guess just because it's a fitting knife. But I got all of this fit up. Everything's taped right now. These need to be pushed together, but when you push them together... It's like flawless. So I've got everything taped. I've got my bow eye fit on here. Um, what's going to happen is this bow eye is going to get fully welded out to both sides of my stainless. Fully welded out. And it's a pretty good fit. It's going to be really easy to fill that tiny little gap right there. Um, and then I'll fully weld out this seam all the way down. And then again, it's only going to have four holes that are going to screw it to the boat. Um, this one here, which is right in the middle of my chine line. So that'll go into a nice thick chine. And then up here at the top, it'll go into my shear. The rest of these holes, just like my transom band, are going to be dummy holes. They'll have a... They're already tapped. They'll have a stainless screw in them to look screwed. But again, they'll only be four actual holes. And the main strength is going to be this bow eye. Basically... When I go to install this, you'll just grab the bow eye, slide the thing through the hole, put the nut on the back side, and then put these four screws in. So really, these are just kind of redundant safeties, these four screws. All the strength's going to be in the bow eye that's going to hold the whole entire cut water on the boat. So that's what I was working on tonight. Kind of a long-winded explanation, but uh, working on the stainless. So we've got the cut water fully welded out. Uh, you can see the beads all the way up to the center. And then from the bow eye down, I started the preliminary sanding. So you can see here's all the, the welds. And then from here down, it's all smooth. So basically, I just... Uh, I did some of that on my disc sander. I did some of it with the belt sander. I did some of it with my 5.5 inch RO with uh, 80 grit on it. But that's just the, the preliminary sand. Um, so, you know, tomorrow I've got to finish sanding all the way up to the very tip. Wait, wait, there it is, all the way up to the tip. Both sides sand that out. I'll sand all the way around this and smooth it. And I think I'm going to put one more pass over the bow eye to fill it in a little bit. Um, and then the same thing, I'll, I'll smooth all of this in. And anyhow, after I've gone over all of the welds and smoothed them in with 80 grit, then I'll come back with, you know, 120 and then 320 and then 600. And I'll just keep sanding and sanding and sanding until it's ready to polish out. Um, so again, I used my, my MIG welder. I used 025 wire uh, and it is 308L stainless wire and uh, picked up a bottle of tri mix or or stainless mix to weld it with uh, and it welded very very easily um with that 025 i was able to turn the heat way 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 down and even being super thin like this stuff is it uh it welded up very very easy um and i'm not just saying that it really was easy um i in this entire seam where it's two 20 gauge pieces of stainless, you know, peaked touching each other. I never burnt through, not one time on that entire seam. Um, so I actually tacked it together while it was on the boat. Um, I wrapped tape around everything and kind of pulled the, the gap together. And then I tack it, you know, move down two or three inches, tack it, tack it, tack it. I actually tacked the whole thing together on the boat. And then I, uh, again, grabbed the bow eye, slid it out, and then welded it out over on my sawhorses. But uh, anyhow, I, I just stitched the entire thing. I would do a tack here, you know, and then I'd move way down here, and then way down here, and then I'd come back up to the top. And the entire thing, you can see, is tiny little stitches. Hopefully you can see that. Focus. 
Anyhow, it's kind of hard to see, but the whole thing is done in stitches. And I think doing it that way kept things from warping and expanding. It fit very, very well um, after it was all welded out. There's still a little bit of final fit work to do. Uh, I'm going to tighten this up to the bottom of the hull. There's maybe... Uh, not quite a quarter inch gap right here. So I've got to tighten that up a little bit. Same up at the top, maybe maybe a quarter up here. Uh, not much at all. It really didn't warp, stretch, expand, tweak, bend. And I think a lot of that had to do with running such a small wire. I could keep the heat down. Um, I got 100% penetration on the inside all the way down. So it's a very, very strong weld. But I didn't have to put much heat to it. Um, and I think that really was the key to not getting a lot of warpage. But that's where we are. So, finish sanding this out. Um, grind, uh, sand all of this smooth, do a second pass around the bow eye, sand it smooth again, and then start working my way through the grit so I can polish it. Um, before I polish it, of course, I'll do the final little fit work here and there on it, but making good progress. So, what I'm working on now uh, are some backer blocks for the cut water, which we'll get into later. But basically, I needed to make 30 of these little round backer blocks. So what I did was I just cut them square. It's about a half inch thick. Cut little squares, whole bunch of them, 30 of them. And then I located from corner to corner, diagonally, where the center was, and I marked that with an X. I then came back and drew the diameter circle I wanted on here and took it over to my bandsaw and just nipped the corners off of each one of these. So you got kind of a crappy, you know, shape here. It's not round. Now what I needed to do was sand all of these to a nice perfectly round diameter. And I was trying to come up with a, a, a uniform diameter. Anyhow, I was trying to come up with a way to do it and I couldn't come up with a way. And it just hit me. I built this quick little jig. It's a piece of plywood. It's hard to tell, but there's a nail just barely protruding and it's a specific distance from this edge, which is half the distance from my center to the outside of the, uh, the circle I've drawn here. So I went through with another nail and I've center punched these right on my center line. So what you do is you locate the center and it makes a nice little pivot point right on the edge of my disc sander. So we'll come over and I'll show you how this works. So I've got my little Got my little jig here. Now what I'm going to do is after I get this set on here, I'm going to slide it up so it just about touches the wheel, about like that. We're not quite touching. So we're going to take this guy, wiggle it around. There's my center. We're going to run this up and start sanding right there. Now all I have to do is spin this guy. Oh, we came off a little bit. Then we'll make one more pass around this thing. And I can't come up with any better way to sand a perfect circle like that. This little jig, especially because I've got 30 of them to make, it really makes the job go super quick. But I thought I'd show you how I do that. So here's an update of the cut water. As you can see, it is... Uh, I've got a, it's just a really quick five minute polish on it just to locate rougher areas that need finer sanding. Um, this thing will, I mean, you can see the reflection of the wench rope up here in it. So still it's, it's dull. It's not anywhere close to where it's going to be, but it's a very, very good fit all the way down. Very, very good fit all the way up. Um, you may or may it not have noticed, but there are now twice as many screw holes as there were in here. And I, I broke one of my cardinal rules. I didn't want to, but to make it look the best, I had to. Every single one of those is an actual screw. It actually goes through the hole. Um, I didn't want to, but again, I think it... it it was the only way to make it fit really well. Without all these screws, if they were dummy screws, it would have fit fairly close, but it wouldn't have been as tight a fit as I'd like it to have been. And 
I was worried that the waves smacking on it constantly, you know, having a tiny little gap in there would eventually, you know, getting beat on a few thousand times an hour, um, would eventually wear through the clear on the hull and then create a bigger problem. So every single one of those is a hole in my boat. I didn't want to, but it, it turned out nice regardless. Um, and I will go way above and beyond sealing each one of those. And that's what the little backer blocks are for that we're working on. Um, right now I just have 3 8 screws, number 6 3 8 that are just holding it on there. Um, by, I think they're 3 8 long, anyhow, number 6 screws. I'll go to 5 8 long and I'll glue a block behind each one of these the little round blocks that we were building so that the screw will actually go through the ply of the hole and bite into some hardwood. Um, so I, I think that's a better way to go. But anyhow, it's a great fit. Here's a look at the stainless bow eye. How we've got it all most of the way smoothed in now. It's looking pretty darn good. Doesn't really want to focus too well on it, but it just, it looks like one piece, just like I wanted it to. But it's a very, very good fit. It looks very, very nice. Um, we'll come up and we'll look. Here's a look at the uh, at the seam. You know, this this was my weld, and it just looks fan damn-tastic. Come on, focus, baby. Let me see if I can get us to focus a little bit better. There we go. Yeah. So it just it looks like one piece now. But again, it's a, it's a really good fit down this side too, all the way down. And I have a little bit of fit work to do. You can see a little bit of a, a wobble right here. I couldn't couldn't finish fitting it behind this rubber stop. So I'll get this pulled off and then I'll continue fit work. But it looks pretty good. Pretty darn happy with it. So uh, that's where we are in the cutwater. Still have some work to do, but it's almost done. Making good progress. All right, so we now have all of our blocks glued in here. These are our little round ones that we were making on the disc sander. Um, I did the bottom half one night and then I did this upper half last night. Um, positioned them, uh, you know, where I wanted them. Ran the screw through, just a screw from the outside and snugged them up with a little epoxy on each part. Um, let them cure. Following night, same thing up here. Uh, let them cure and then tonight I went ahead and did a quick encapsulating coat of epoxy over all of them and this top surface up here on the breast hook because it was still raw. Uh, in preparation for screwing down all of the deck planking, I won't be able to reach up in this area uh, very well anyhow with the deck planking on. So I wanted to get all this encapsulation done in areas that I don't want to crawl up in here and do afterwards. Um, our Silicon bronze screws, the three quarter inch and the one inch showed up to finish the deck planking. So now I have everything I need to finish the deck planking. I have all of the screws. I have the Glen epoxy grip. So or sub deck anyhow. So we'll get the sub deck all on here in the next few days. Um, for my small parts assembly, I've been using this G flex. Uh, I've been using that since the very start of the boat build. I like it because they're small little flexible plastic bottles. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one mix ratio, as much or as little as you need. So for small parts assembly, I love that stuff. And that's this orange colored stuff here. This is two days old, um, rock hard. Now, just as an experiment, because I ran out of this G-Flex, and this is my Glen Epoxy grip, I didn't want to open. I have a brand new cork kit, which is two bottles, one hardener, and uh, and one resin. I didn't want to open my brand new one just to glue on, you know, six more of these blocks. So I had these sitting around. Take a look at the date. Since February 18th of 2015. So this stuff's two years old. It's been sitting out here in my garage. Uh, underneath my bench, there's some more old ones. Uh, and I just thought, well, I'll mix up a small, small batch just to glue the last, I think, eight of these on the upper section not knowing if it was going to be good anymore. I mean, it's two years old. It's been sitting out in my garage. It's not humidity controlled out here. It's not temperature controlled, you know, so it's made it through two summers, two winters, and everything in between. And this stuff, this is it right here. This is the Glen L Poxy Grip right there. And this stuff is, I applied it last night, so this is one day old. Totally rock hard, completely cured. 
So even two years old, sitting out here in the garage with no kind of temperature or humidity control, still works completely fine. So anyhow, that's where we're at, making good progress. All right, so today we officially got the bow half of the sub deck glued and screwed on. It's on there. It's done. Um, I started applying the Glen L Poxy Grip, which is basically thickened epoxy, at about 11 a.m. It is just now about 7 p.m. And uh, th this is the cup, completely cured. Well, this isn't the cup, this is the leftover epoxy. Completely rock hard cured, um, you know, roughly eight hours later. So the deck is officially glued on, the sub deck. It's never coming off again. So now I'm getting ready to do my two inch little backer blocks. I'll get some epoxy mix up, get them cut to fit in here, two inches of each side. Apply the epoxy and clamp it in place, one here, one over here. And then I need to do one on this piece. So I'll get those done now. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be gluing the rear sub deck down. So we're making good progress. Um, down to some final fitment and polishing on the cut water and it's officially done and then we're down to deck planking so making good progress oh one other thing i wanted to mention as you can see i've got the uh i've got this half of the armrest where the front half of the sub deck uh stops i covered that with some paper just in case anything were to uh you know any excess epoxy were to run down and drip. I didn't want any of that to land on my beautifully varnished armrests or frames. And it's a good thing too, because there's a giant epoxy blob right there that, you know, had I not caught it and got it cleaned up or protected them as they are, it would have made a gigantic mess that, you know, would have required a large amount of work to repair. So I guess that was good thinking, covering that up with some paper. Anyhow, making good progress. And today we have the rear section of sub deck all glued down. Glued and screwed, it's never coming off, so all of the sub deck is forever. So that's where we are, making good progress. You can see I've got strategically placed pieces of mask paper and tape kind of protecting against any possible drips. Although I haven't seen any yet on this back side, we did get some on the front side like we talked about. There it is, making good progress. All right, well, it's officially August 1st, 2017. For the month of July, 2017, we went up 35 hours. So again, uh, another month of good hours. It's five months in a row now I've been able to put decent hours into the boat. Um, obviously that has nothing to do with spare time and has everything to do with available materials to work with. Um, so with any luck, August 2017, we can keep that uh, decent hours going. Um, for this month, we went up $130.99. Uh, some of that was in new silicon bronze screws so I could finish attaching the sub deck. Some of that was in uh, uh, rolls of tape. Uh, also the 70 bucks of that was in the Trimix gas for the stainless MIG to rent a bottle. So anyhow, $130.99. So the 35 hours even, that brings us up to 769 and a half hours into the zip. Uh, of that, total of 35 hours, 10 and a quarter of that was deck, 22 into the stainless, and 2.75, two and three quarters into epoxy coat. The $130.99 brings us up to $8,936.92, so we're not that far off from cresting $9,000. Um, so if we come over here to our hours um, deck, that brings us up to 20 and a half hours into the deck. The uh, stainless, that brings us up to 34 and a half hours into the stainless. I'm not quite done. So 40 hours was my guess to manufacture the stainless parts and we're gonna be right at about 40 hours to have it finished um, and then the the last was two and three quarters hours into the epoxy coat so that brings us up to 76 and three quarters hours into epoxy coat so uh, let's see where we are so this is where we're at I know I said I was gonna clean the garage 
you may not believe it, but I did clean the garage. This is just, uh, this is the end result of a month out here of hammering down on stainless work and subdecking and things like that. Um, so again, I need to clean my garage. Uh, you can see I've got the cut water sitting up here and uh, I'll grab a hold of this guy. So here it is, it still needs polish. You can see the seam just turned out beautifully. Um, here's a look at the, the bow eye where it's smoothed in. Hopefully you can see that okay. So I still got some smoothing work to do. Not a lot, but it turned out really nice. And obviously I got some final fit work and polishing to do. We'll flip it over and look at the backside. So there's that 100% uh, that weld. It just turned out really, really good. And here's where the bow eye pokes through. Now the red that's on there is just some paint pen that I put around the weld. The stainless all thread is welded to the cut water on the backside here. And I used that paint pen, put a bunch of paint on it, slid it through the bow of the boat, and then bumped it a few times, slid it back out, and I looked for red paint on the bow of my boat to see where there were any clearance issues where I needed to uh, cut or grind or anything like that for clearance issues. So that's the red paint. Um, just got some final sand work to do, some final polish work to do, and then the cut water is pretty much done. Um, so we're making good progress on that, but uh, that's where we are on it. So this month we'll continue, I would imagine, sanding and polishing on that. So I spent some time towards the last few days of last month filling all of my subdeck screw holes with famo wood. Now I use the natural Tapello famo wood that I had left over from the subwoofer box. It does not match this wood at all. It's not even close. And if I were going to just clear this, boy, they would stick out like a sore thumb because they are a very different color than this Maranti, than the Hydrotech. But Obviously, this is not my deck. This is just sub deck. And the reason I filled all these holes was because I wanted to take away some of the visual distraction of all of the screws and screw holes in this. Um, so I could draw out, lay out my deck planking, how I wanted it to look. And I filled those screw holes just to take away some of the visual distraction. So that's something else I did uh, the last few days of this month. We'll go up here to the tip of the bow. Um, so some people round this over. Um, some people have the deck lines come to a sharp point. That's what I did. So my king plank, it's going to be kind of hard to, to visualize, but this is the king plank, the center plank, and it will be seven and three quarters inches wide. It's the exact same width as my cover boards out here, seven and three quarters. So imagine this split not being here. This is one wide plank in the center. It is split by quarter inch seams. So these are all quarter inch, this is a quarter inch, and these small planks are two inches. So that's the pattern I originally wanted. That's the pattern I just kind of had in my head. And I've kept a lot of the, a lot of the different things in the boats, in this boat, kind of the same width and dimensions, like my narrow floor planks are two inch wide. Um, so anyhow, I drew out my pattern. Um, I made, let me see if I can find it here, here we go. So I made this little stick. This is my zero end, and this is quarter inch seam, two inch plank, quarter inch seam, two inch plank, quarter inch seam. So I laid out my king plank down the center, I stuck this up beside it, and I drew out the corresponding lines, and then just connected the dots. I made this little template to lay out to see if, much like the floor planks, that pattern had to work up here in the front cockpit so that this wasn't just a tiny little sliver plank out on the sides, and it did. So then I moved over to the, what will be the bridge deck, and as you can see again, that seven and three quarters king plank runs down the center, one big wide one, and then the two inchers. And then I had to check it back here to make sure that this wasn't gonna be just a tiny little sliver, you know, sliver of a plank, and it's, it's over an inch wide here. You can see how it follows the taper of the boat off to zero. So it worked here, which is good. It works in the front cockpit on the, the, the dashboard area. It works on the rear cockpit dash area. And then one more place I had to check it was again back here on the motor well. And here we are again, king plank, seven and three quarter wide, and then 
quarter inch gap, two inch, quarter inch, two inch, quarter inch, two inch, so on and so forth, out to this corner to make sure this wasn't gonna be a tiny little sliver. And again, it works here. Because the center line is dead center, if it works on one half, it's gonna work on the other half. But I went ahead and drew out the entire deck planking scheme. Um, something else I did that I saw, I can't remember whose boat it was, but where this quarter inch seam comes around, they don't run clear off the edge of the boat. It makes a nice little corner here and follows the edge of the transom, the inside edge of the transom. I just think that kind of looked neat. So there you kind of get an idea of it. If you can see it, we'll come up here. You kind of get an idea of the bridge deck. And then we'll come up to the front of the boat. You get an idea of the bow. So this will all be African mahogany. I need to go pick up my planks. I need to, most of the planks I've been buying are, are 13 16 thick. I need to resaw them down the center to roughly, you know, 3 8 and then I'll plane them down to a quarter inch. Um, so all of this sub deck planking, or I'm sorry, all of the deck planking on top of the sub deck will be a quarter inch thick. And, you know, these, these will be 7 and 3 quarters wide, same as my king plank, king plank, King plank down the center, seven and three quarters. And then the rest of them all will be two inch. So this seven and three quarters, because this makes a, a pretty sharp curve here, you know, I need a really wide board, the widest I can find and resaw. But no matter what, I'm not gonna find a board that's four feet wide that I can make this all out of one piece. So there's going to be a joint. You know, let's say I get a 10 inch wide board um, you know, maybe it'll end here. There'll be a joint here and then the, another 10 inch board You know, there'll probably be a joint somewhere in here and then the final will probably cover it all so I'm guessing Depending on how wide of, of material I can get this is probably gonna be there'll probably be two joints per Cover board. That's what they call these boards out here on the side. They cover the shear um, So that's where we are. I need to pick up my My uh, mahogany planks and start resawing and playing them down to the final thickness and I can start gluing them on you get all those glued down I can start filling my deck seams and then we're just down to pretty stuff making fan fantastic progress thank you for watching um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe rate and comment and we'll catch you guys on the next update of their sawdust on freaking everything Building the zip.